Another fellow walked in the doctor, he said, Doc, I'm in trouble. He said, calm down, mate. He said, I'm in trouble. He said, please calm down. I said, doc, I'm in trouble. He said, calm down. What's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? He went, Doc. He said, Doc, God. Oh, my God, doctor. He said, I've got this overwhelming, uncontrollable, irrepressible, irreversible desire to stick my dick in a bacon slicer. <laughs> he said, you haven't? He said, I fucking have. I fucking have. I he said, where do you work? He said, Sainsbury's. Oh, he said. He said, take these tablets home. He said, they're not all that strong. He said, but they should cure it if they don't come back and see me on Wednesday. Monday, the door burst open, Doc. Doc, I've done it, I've done it. He said, you done what? He said, I've stuck my dick in a bacon slicer. <laughs> oh, he said, my God, how's your dick? He said, fine. He said, what about the bacon slicer? He said, a bastard give his notice in. <laughs> friends in the audience and I, that I work with some people that I say unequivocally, if that's the right word, and I'm very, very fond of. My Pamela down there, Pam St. Clemens, give her a nice round of applause. A lovely <laughs> artist, a lovely girl. <laughs> young Adam Wood, yeah? Stand up, Adam. Very fine actor, that young man. <laughs> this is Steve McFadden. That's him, yeah? A couple of my offspring here, Daniela. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> She's a lovely young lady. And my old sparring partner, Sid. Sid, give her a round of all Sydney. Sid. Lovely. 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 And a very nice gentleman we got in the audience from the Sun newspaper. <laughs> Mr. Gary Butcher, where are you, Gary? I know you're down there somewhere. I had a dream about you last night, Gary. <laughs> I dreamed I went to heaven. And I was standing in this room with St. Peter, and there were billions of clocks around this wall. Billions and billions of clocks. I said to Peter, what are all these clocks, Pete? He said, I'll tell you what they are, Mike. He said, everybody on Earth's lifetime clock. I said, but every now and again, some, some of them jump forward on that. Why is that? He said, I'll tell you what that is, Mike. He said, any time anybody on Earth interferes with himself, <laughs> it takes an hour off their life. I said, I can't see Gary Bushel's clock around here anywhere. <laughs> he said, no, we keep it in the kitchen as a fan. He said. <laughs> fellow walked in an all-night cafe, went up to the behind the counter, he said, a cup of sweet tea, cup of sweet tea, I need it. And you got any cakes? Any cakes? He said, what are you talking about? Give me some cakes. Plenty. He said, what's the matter? He said, what's the matter? He said, oh, I'm six tonight. He said, I picked up a bird, a raving lunatic, didn't lunatic, mate. He said, I've been in the back of the car with it all night long. <laughs> look at me eyes, look at me fucking eyes. <laughs> he said, I can't stand him. He said, I need a cup of sweet tea, cup of sweet tea. He said, listen, mate, he said, I've been here 24 hours a day. He said, any chance of me slipping out and giving it one? He said, please, please. This guy's been in the back of the car. We fucking we <laughs> All of a sudden on the window, copper stand there with a torch. He went, <laughs> I said, uh, sorry, officer, he said, <laughs> just fucking a <the> wife. <laughs> Cop said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, I didn't realise it was your wife. <laughs> he said, not at all, you turn that fucking torch on. <laughs> I walked into a street corner toilet, and I've got a street corner toilet, which is French for street corner toilet, toilet, toilet. <laughs> There's an old boy in the corner having a J. Arthur. <laughs> Couple went, gotcha, fucking gotcha. The old boy went, <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> Couple said, what do you mean bollocks? He went, <laughs> got no fucking witnesses, have you? <laughs> Couple went, as a matter of fact, you're right, mind you, that is a room. Fair old chap you've got there. <laughs> Would you like to give me one? The old boy went, <laughs> Yeah, he said. Copper dropped his trousers, bent over. The old boy went, Wallop. Copper went, Gotcha, down the fucking nick. <laughs> always amazing. Always amazing me at a copper. I mean, it would be true to say that each and every one of us here, and at some stage of the game, I'm talking about fellas in general, 
I've had the occasion to appear on court, whether it be something minor or, you know, something or something bleeding major. Always the major minute out of copper always gives his evidence the same way. Swear I'm going to you get the number two. Uh, Your Honour, on the uh, 4th of the 5th of 1991, I was heading in a westerly direction down Oxford Street, and on passing the doorway 233, I saw the accused. The accused had his trousers round his ankles, <laughs> bent over, facing north. <laughs> Behind the accused, also facing north, was another man with his penis inserted into the accused Harris. <laughs> In front of the accused, facing south, <laughs> was another man with his penis inserted in the accused mouth. On seeing this, I said, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> the accused replied, oh, God. <laughs> Not being entirely satisfied with his reply. <laughs> I took him into custody, and that is the evidence of the prosecution, my lord. Yes, 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 we can't have cases of indecent exposure going on in the streets of London. I think under these particular circumstances, I shall pass rather a heavy sentence. But before I do, have you anything to say for yourself, young man? He went, fuck all. <laughs> Just did I beg your pardon? He went, fuck all. <laughs> Just said, excuse me, Barrister, what did he say? He said, fuck all, Your Honour. <laughs> Don't be a cunt, I saw his lips move. <laughs> Three babies born in hospital. One was a Jewish baby, Irish baby, and a German baby. And the nurse got mixed up. She thought, what the bloody hell am I going to do? She got trolley, she went, hey, Hitler! And the little German baby jumped up and went, Zeke, hell! <laughs> Little Jewish baby shit himself. <laughs> and the Irish baby shoveled it up. Do <laughs> you about the Irish fella making love to a princess, burnt his balls on the exhaust pipe? <laughs> Irishman, Englishman, Scotchman stand in the bar and his Scotch fellow said to the English fellow, he said, do you have any family? As a matter of fact, they do. He said, I have one son born on St George's Day. We call him George. And the Scotchman said, no, it's a coincidence. He said, my second little boy was born on St Andrew's Day. We call him Andrew. And Paddy was sitting in the corner and went, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a small world. The same thing happened with me and my boy Pancake. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> all of these stories, I'm sure you've heard them all before. Of course, they're all bloody old gags. And here's one I know you've heard, but I love telling it. House in Ireland, the flames leaping up in a bloody air, and a woman appeared at the window with a baby. And the crowd went, troll the baby down. She said, I can't to be killed and to be killed. Don't be a pilchard, troll the baby down. She said, I can't to be killed. Out the crowd, he said, Mrs. I am the Irish international goalkeeper. I've never dropped a ball in my life. Troll the baby down. With that, she threw the baby out the window. As the baby was coming down, there was a gust of wind, and it took the baby to one side. The goalie leapt in the air, and he snatched the baby from death. The crowd went a raving mad. Hooray! Greg! He bounced the baby twice and <laughs> kicked it! <laughs> Jack and Lad Skinny saw this notice outside a shop. Wanted Andy, man. He thought we'll have some on it. She said, oi! Fucking oi, oi, oi. <laughs> fella come out and said, can I help you? Yeah, he said, uh, you got a notice there, so I wanted Andy, man. He said, I'm Andy, man. He said, are you a handyman? I said, live around a fucking corner. That's Andy, isn't it? <laughs> no, he said, no. <laughs> he said, look, you look a reasonably intelligent young man. He said, have you done any selling before? No, he said, I've done, no, I've done, no, I've done, no, no. I've done, I've done, no, 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 no,
He said, well, look, it's very, very simple selling. He said, I'll take the first customer, watch how I sell, then you can take the second customer. It's very simple, just watch. First customer come in, the governor went out. I said, can I help you, sir? He said, yes. He said, I'd like a packet of grass seed, please. He said, yeah, I'll sell the grass seed, 75p. He said, there's your lawnmower. Sorry? He said, there's a the lawnmower. I said, I'm sorry, I don't understand. He said, when the grass grows, so you'll need something to cut it with, wouldn't you? He said, of course. How much? He said, five pound down, pound a year for five years. He said, fine, fine. He said, now, son, that's what I sell. You take the next customer, any kind. <laughs> I have a little problem. Do you have a packet of the, um, <laughs> uh, the ladies, um, you know, <laughs> it's the wrong week. You said, do you have a packet of Tampax, Tampax, please. So yeah, yeah, Tampax, mate, uh, 85 p, there's your lawnmower. <laughs> what do I need a lawnmower for? Well, it's a week getting fucked up, might as well cut the grass. <laughs> Picture the scene. Mum and Dad had gone out for the night, left Uncle in charge of the house. There he is, pipe at his mouth, feet on a buffet, watching the box. All of a sudden, the door opened. In walks a 16-year-old daughter, crying her eyes out. He said, what's the matter, darling? He said, but Uncle is... Is that boyfriend of mine? He's such a dirty bastard. He said, I'm not staying or tolerate that sort of language in this house where your mother and father are out. He said, but Uncle, don't tell me about explaining it. He's a dirty bastard. He said, what's the matter, darling? He said, Uncle, he only, he only puts his hands on my breast. He looked up and down and thought, 16 years old. So what do you mean, love? Um, like this? <laughs> she said, yes. He said, there's nothing. Nothing dirty about that. He said, nothing. <laughs> so my uncle only puts his hands inside my bra. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> Is it you? Uh, uh, you mean like this? She says, yes, there's nothing dirty about it. So my uncle only puts his hands up my clothes. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. He said, do you mean like this? She said, yes, there is nothing dirty about it. So my uncle only puts his hands inside my knickers. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, do you mean like this? She said, yes, he said, there is nothing dirty. So my uncle only gets his finger out and puts it inside me. But oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, thank you, God. He said, you mean like this? He said, yes. He said, there's nothing dirty about that. So my uncle, he's only got AIDS. He went, the dirty one-eyed bastard. <laughs> thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. God bless you.